Welcome to the Voice of Triumph with Roger R. Woodard, Senior Pastor of Family Worship Center located in Kings Mountain, North Carolina. Pastor Woodard's ministry is reaching a hurting world with the life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Now, from Kings Mountain, North Carolina, here is Pastor Roger R. Woodard. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance, for as ye in times past have not believed God, yet now you've obtained mercy through Israel's unbelief. Even so, have they also now not believed, but through your mercy, they also may obtain mercy. For God has concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. O oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor, or who hath first given to him that it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, and you always, it's old, I know, but you have to find out what the therefore is therefore. And what is this therefore, therefore, that through him, by him, and to him are all things. All things came from him. All things are sustained by him. All things will eventually return to him. Since that is the case, I beseech you, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Another translation says, this is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why should I do that? Because of the mercies of God. Mercies, not just rewards. The wages of sin is death. I can earn that. But the gift of God is eternal life. I'll never earn that. I'll never deserve that. It is by the mercy of God that we're not consumed. It is by the mercies of God that you're here today. You may take that for granted. But the fact that he woke me up this morning, my mind was clear, even if I was a little groggy, that when I rolled out of bed, these shaky old knees held me up. And I was able to go and get in the shower and put water upon my personal being to wash my hair and brush my teeth, towel off and then dress myself and get to the house of God three times. <laughs> and you say, well, what's that all about? Because there are hundreds, if not thousands of people today that can't brush their teeth can't wash their bodies, can't comb their hair, can't clothe themselves, can't even go to the restroom by themselves, but you're here. Maybe your battery was down on your car too, and maybe all your honkies aren't dory, and all your ducks aren't in a line today, but oh, I'm in the house of God with lots to praise him for. Lots to praise him for. I got lots to praise him for. I can't count them all. But we are living in a pressure cooker world where the world around us is trying its very best to pressure us into its mold, to pressure our thought processes, our likes and our dislikes, to tell us what's cool 
And what is it cool? We live in the generation where good is called evil and evil is called good. And the preponderance of the pressures across the board are trying to make us conform to the world's norm. And and let me just take you through some things. Keep your Bibles open, if you would, and read some with me. Go first to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and read some stuff. Now the Spirit speaks. This isn't hearsay. The Spirit is speaking, and he's speaking expressly that in the latter times, our times, some shall depart from the faith, the faith, our faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Now go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Paul again in his very last letter. This know also that in the last days perilous, dangerous times shall come. What makes these times dangerous is that they're subtle. There's so much in the public arena that's got a little grain of truth are almost the truth, but it's not quite the truth. And there's enough deception in it to deceive and lead people down a pathway to hell and destruction. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Sound familiar? We have come into the home stretch, ladies and gentlemen. We are seeing played out in the public arena the same type of hatred that possessed Nazis to lead people into the ovens because they considered them inferior and they considered them a pollutant in the land and an impediment to the agenda. And I know people don't like that. I know people get mad at me for saying that, but let me remind you of something. The people in Germany at that time were the most highly educated, sophisticated people in the world. And they fell under the hold of this deception. And you see it. How else could you see otherwise intelligent, educated people espouse some of the evil with a straight face that they do? They are totally committed to the destruction of the Christian foundation of this nation and all righteousness at all costs. And there's no low to which they will not stoop, including if they could, eradicating you and me. You know, Pastor, I don't believe that. Then you aren't paying attention. In this day in which we live, one of the most serious allies that these evil events have is an apostate church. In the last days, there's going to be a remnant church, a group of people who, not necessarily denomination, but who are seriously hungry for God and righteousness. Enough people who are enough awake that they know where they have to go to sustain themselves and be strong and blunt the plans of hell. And it won't be in the halls of Congress and it won't be in the White House. It won't be in the State House. It won't be in any political party, but it'll be at the foot of the cross where we pray to the Lord Jesus Christ. But I just want to tell you, you can't espouse the name of Christ and then take your stand with the ungodly. And the biggest problem we have is an apostate church. 
who just thinks all we need is love and faith. In what Scripture says that they would turn away from the faith, give heed to seducing spirits, because it is very seductive, and doctrines of devils. Let me go another one with you, back to Romans chapter 1. Happens to be where I'm teaching on Wednesday night. And let's see what the Word of God says, beginning in verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were a foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise. They became fools. Sounds familiar to me. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to the corruptible man, and to birds and four footed beasts and, and creeping things. As a matter of fact, I said Wednesday night, on the mall in Washington, they have erected again the, the pathway or the Arch of Baal. And in New York City, we have another pagan deity that's being honored by monuments. You think this isn't rampant in our nation, but it is. In a nation that's supposed to be Christian, we're just about anything but that. Wherefore, God gave them up. Three times in this chapter says God gave them up. God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own bodies, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. We are the most body-possessed worshipers in the world. Billions of dollars are spent on pornography, at the foot of the God of the human form in the human body. What? No amen there? Billions spent on creature worship. Billions spent on body augmentation to try to get that hot little body, men and women, that conforms to the image the world wants. Well, if my knees weren't hurting me so bad, I'd dance a little jig right there because nobody wants to really take that into heart. Let me dig a little deeper then. Maybe we won't shout today. So for this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another. Oh, I just think the church needs to be a little more tolerant. So we just love everybody. I want to tell you something. No preacher loves you who won't teach you and preach to you the truth. You say, well, I don't like it here. Well, you can find what you want, but you'll mess it up too because you'll be there. We could run from the truth or we can believe it or we could do what some people do and try to ignore it. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate or a ruined, worthless mind to do things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, which is all sexual sin, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, 
despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. All of those things who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, here's the kicker for the church. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. In other words, there's a lot of folks who wouldn't do these things, they just are entertained by them. On TV and movies and uh, stars. And, you know, I had some people get mad at me for what I said. I, believe it or not, isn't that amazing? But I, I said, I don't want a fat person to tell me how to lose weight. I don't want a bald person to tell me how to have hair. I don't want somebody that ain't got no kids to tell me how to raise mine. I don't want anybody that's been married seven times and still don't have a successful marriage telling me how to have one. Excuse me, I'm sorry. That makes me radical? Perhaps. This is the perverted world we live in. And then he says in chapter two, verse one, a section, therefore you are inexcusable, O oh man. I ain't done. Second Peter chapter two, beginning in verse number four. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them into hell and delivered them to the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overflow, overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. And, look, and here's where I'm going with this. And deliver just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. Sound familiar? Lot. Now he made a big mistake in the first place. He pitched his tent towards Sodom. He made that choice. And one of the sad things, we hear how God delivered Lot and his family. Thank God for that. But what should shake us up is this. He went down there with so much livestock, so many servants, so big of family that he and Abraham couldn't live together. They had to separate. The land could not contain them all. And now we see him sitting outside this evil city vexed because of the evilness that he heard and saw every day. And when he escapes, he escapes with himself and two daughters. Yes, he got out, spared, but what a loss. And here we are in this society. Are we vexed by what we see? Are we vexed by what we hear? Or are we enamored by it? And we see what's going on. What's our reaction? Well, some people's reaction is bemoan it. Oh, Pastor, it's terrible. Oh, I tell you, it's awful. Well, yeah, I agree. It is awful. But others just accept it. Well, it's prophecy. It's got to come. I'm not going to fret myself for trying to do anything about it. You know when your attitude will change? When it invades your home. You know when you'll see it differently? When it's your son or daughter caught up in this lifestyle. When it's your son or daughter comes in and says, well, I, I'm going to marry my male lover or my girl lover and they get caught up in the L, G, B, T, W, X, Y, Z, Q, 2, R, 
lifestyle. You know when your attitude will change? When that man comes in the restroom with your little girl and tries to molest her, your attitude, just like the leader of the uh, ACLU that came to Atlanta to run their department from California, and she was all for this transgender bathroom until a man came in with her two daughters, and all of a sudden, she was beating it back to California. She didn't think she was quite that liberal. You're preaching politics. Oh, get over yourself. I'm preaching against a real evil here. A real evil here. And you can just say, well, you know, that's just the way of the world and there's nothing we can do about it. Yes, there is. There's a lot we can do about it. First of all, we ought to get off our blessed assurance and start really praying about this thing. We have a very effectual weapon in prayer. But I don't think the church as a rule is really disturbed yet because it hasn't come home to them. But when they're out there picketing against this church because of what I preach, and they want to come in here and disrupt our service, that's the reason why I don't really go in for picketing places and demonstrating places and leave them alone as far as that goes. I don't want them picketing against us, but I'm not going to be silent either. We've got a real evil taking over this country. And we're about as evenly divided on these issues as I've ever seen since Dr. King marched for civil rights. And the church wants us to be saved. Someone even said that to me on Wednesday night. Well, we just don't believe the church ought to be that involved in politics, Pastor. And I said, really, did you believe that when Dr. King was organizing the demonstrations in the churches around the South and leading the preachers and the Christians out on the street to change the evil of segregation? I didn't hear anybody complaining about the preachers being in the street then. I am. Some even choose to participate with it. Oh, it's not real bad. I've heard this. I am sick of it. The church just needs to be more accepting and more loving. Look, as far as I know, I don't hate anybody. I hate sin, and I hate this to a core. But we better wake up and realize where we are. We're in the shadow of the revelation of the Antichrist. His system... Each day is getting more and more involved and ensconced in our society. Or you can resist it. And it starts with you. We can't let the world press us into its mold. We can't conform our thoughts I saw, I saw a headline this week where 40% of the millennials in this country want socialism. You are here today with the freedom that you have because patriots paid for it with their blood and gave you the liberty to be a fool if you choose to. It takes a man or a woman to stand against the pressure of this society. Had an overseer, well, he's still alive, he's preached here, Bill Rayburn. Years ago, we were in the old building. Bill and I were racquetball buddies, and we would chase each other around the racquetball court and then need to go to the hospital. But we wouldn't let each other know we had beaten each other up that bad, but our wives knew. And they would discuss it about how each one thought he was having a heart attack or something afterward. But no, we wouldn't let the other one know it. I mean, Bill was was as competitive on the court as anyone as I ever played. Didn't beat him often, but when I did beat him, it hurt his feelings real bad. And in the shower, 
I noticed the burns on his body. He was painting the floor of his church in Michigan before he was appointed, and it ignited and burned him badly. I mean, the scars were so long. Couldn't tell it because of the shirt collar and everything, but beneath that, he was badly scarred and burned. And he, he said, you know, I really have to fight that, he said, because when I'm at my desk, that scar tissue pulls me. And he said, I have to resist it or I would become permanently deformed. And he said, it's painful, but I have to make myself resist the pull of that scar or scars. That's the way we are in this world. We are in this world, yes, but we're not to be of it. We're in this world, but we're not to be in love with it. We are called to a higher standard. And that standard is the standard of holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Understand, holiness is God's lowest standard. Anything below it, we're disqualified. Scripture says every one of us will give account of ourselves unto God. I don't care what you say, preacher. I don't care what the Bible of the church says. Well, it's okay. You don't answer to me. And I've never tried to dictate how people live. And when people want to leave, I don't try to stop them. And I don't go chasing after them. You're going to give an account to God for you. I'm going to give an account to God for me. My task is to shepherd this flock to the best of my ability and preach the truth. Your responsibility is to accept it or reject it. There are blessings for accepting the word. There are curses for rejecting it. You say, well, I'll just leave. Well, who are you spiting? You can spite me. Because the truth is still the truth. And we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, Christ, to give an account of this life in every deed we've done, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And listen to this, Ecclesiastes 12, 7. When we die, the spirit goes back to God who gave it, and the body goes back to dust from whence it came. That's every one of our futures. Thank you for joining us today for Voice of Triumph. We invite you to check out our website at www.familyworship.org. There you will find information on our church service times, special events, purchase our books and music, and also information on becoming a partner as we continue to take the life-changing message of Jesus Christ to a hurting world. If you'd like to write us concerning our program, our address is The Voice of Triumph, P.O. Box 396, Kings Mountain, 28086, USA. On behalf of Pastor Woodard and the entire Family Worship Center team, God bless you, and we'll see you next week.